Welcome this lesson. We are going to be creating a fade in and fade out for page elements. So a couple different ways to do that. If we've got a bunch of existing elements, so in this case we've got elements with a class of fader, we want to apply a fade out and we're also making these elements clickable. So any element with a class of fader, now when you click on them, when clicking on them on the right hand side in the browser, they're disappearing from view so the opacity on those elements is being changed. So they're still all there. We can also go into the HTML of the elements and we can see that those elements still exist, but because we've updated those elements, the style properties using the transition where we're updating the opacity, that's when the transition is going to kick in and provide that fade out effect. To fade in, we've got some buttons that we've created. So these are all dynamically generated where we've got a button and that's going to be tied to the text div that's just below it within that same parent element. And now when you click it, it fades it out. If you click it again, it fades it in. So we can actually toggle in and out the visible content that's contained within the elements by pressing the button. And this is all dynamically created with JavaScript. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Let's go ahead and we're going to select the output element got a JavaScript file attached to the HTML file, we've called it app1.js. On the right hand side, the Chrome browser is open, and in the bottom right hand side, we've got the DevTools console. So the DevTools console gives us an option to add in some JavaScript output and be able to see it directly within the browser. And this is useful while we're debugging and editing, writing our code. So what we want to do is we want to select that element, we want to apply a vent object to it so that whenever we click the complete JavaScript course, which is the output element, that we see something that will happen. In this case, what we'll do is we'll do a fade in and then afterwards we'll do a fade out and then afterwards we'll set up a button to do a fade in and a fade out. So go ahead and select the element and we're going to apply the event listener to it. So we're going to be adding an event listener. The event that we're listening for is going to be a click. So just doing an anonymous click event. So whenever the button gets clicked, then what we want to do is we want to apply some style properties to the output element. So go ahead and select the element and then selecting the output element using the style, we're going to set the property of opacity. So right now what we're going to do is we're just going to set the value of the opacity to be zero. So whenever the element gets clicked, that's going to hide the element from the view, select the element. So we're going to update the style property to it. So we're updating the transition property. And this is going to be affecting the opacity disappear at a rate of 500 milliseconds. So let's try that out. And we see that we get this fading effect. So we also want to be able to bring it back where we can refresh the page and we click it and bring it back. Of course, we can update this if we change it to 1500 milliseconds. That will slow the fade effect. And this is a way that you can add a fade effect using just pure JavaScript. So let's go ahead and we're going to create some page elements. So doing a loop and we'll create a few different page elements. So increment X and then using the document, create element and create an element on the fly and they can just be divs. And then we'll add all of those elements into the output element. So within the output, we're going to append the newly created element. And let's add in some text content into the element. So we're using the backticks, so those are the template literals. So that gives us a bunch of different counters. And now let's apply some styling to it. So I'm going to remove it off of the output element and apply it directly to the element itself. So we've got the style transition. And then we'll also add the click event to all of the newly created elements to so just bring these into that parent element where we're doing the loop. So they're all getting applied and added into output. And then now whenever they get clicked, we're updating the opacity of them. So let's add in a little bit more to this where we'll add a bunch of different buttons that we can hide and show. So adding in and as we're creating the elements and we're appending it to output, also create a second element and this one can be a button. So this one will be a button that will be clicked and adding that into the main element. So creating an element and the element that we're creating is going to be a button and append the button into it. 
be another div that's going to also be within the element and then we'll add the transition effects to that particular element so this way we add the ability to toggle it to be either opacity zero or opacity one and then that will keep the transition effects so these can also be some divs and then we'll add in some text content into the div the style of the div that we're creating main container element we've got a button that's going to have an action on it and we're selecting the button and it's going to take the div element and update the opacity so we need to also add in some text because we don't see anything for the buttons right now so let's uh, add some text content into the button and actually i'll do these as uh, template literals so once again those are going to be the back ticks and these can just say something like click me and so that we can distinguish between them as we loop through so it creates a bunch of buttons then we need to create the corresponding divs so i didn't add them yet to the element so that's why we're not able to see them so once you add them that's going to add in all of those elements so now we've got a button that can be clicked and that's going to be fading out the element so what we want to do is we want to check to see what the current opacity value is of the element so you can do that by selecting the element and doing the div style and opacity we're just going to return back the opacity value so when we click it we see that it's zero if we click it again it's currently zero so what we want to do is we want to check to see if it exists so if it's uh, going to be a value of one so we're setting it by we can set it by default as a value of one so let's uh, add that in where the default style property value for opacity is going to be one and this way we can check to see if it's zero if it's one so if it doesn't exist then if it exists then we're trying to change the opacity to zero and if it doesn't exist then we've got uh, the ability to change the opacity to one let's uh, track out the opacity values so the first time we click it the value is going to be one the second time we click it the value is going to be zero so it should be updating the opacity to one it still exists as a property value so we can't use the boolean if it's there or if it's not there so what we want to do is we want to check to see if the value is actually equal to one and if it is actually equal to one then we can make the adjustment so now it's going to be at zero so we can fade in and fade back out whenever we're clicking so it's actually toggling the ability to see it so we can get rid of the div style opacity value and now we know that whenever we're clicking them we can toggle them in and also back and this is how you can do fade in and fade out for the elements and if you have a bunch of existing elements that you want to apply this to so if you've got some divs and you've got uh, a class and we'll call it fader so we've, there we've got the newly created divs in the ability for the fade option we can select all of the elements using the document query selector all selecting all of the elements with class of fader so let's go ahead and we're going to do a loop so looping through all of the elements that we've got from fade me and selecting those elements as a value of L for the variable value. And right now we'll just output them into the console. So that gives us all of the elements that are within the HTML page that are fader. So what we wanna do is we wanna apply what we've done over here to those elements. And we're gonna be applying the transition and the opacity to the elements. And this can of course be done with styling, uh, but we are trying to focus on JavaScript so we are keeping it within the JavaScript code. So that's applied all of that to those elements. So now if we've got those elements and that they're clickable, so we'll add that in as well. And adding an event listener. So we'll make them that uh, we can click on those elements. So now as long as we're changing the opacity of the elements, then that's going to be applying that fading effect. So as we loop through each one of the elements, we're going to set the opacity to zero whenever it gets clicked. So now when we click the elements, there we've got the fade effect. And of course, once it's faded, we can't click it and we can't bring it back because the opacity is at zero. But if we want to apply that same functionality that we did where we're using the button, 
you can do that as well. Or you can have other triggers that are hiding and then also showing updating the opacity. So if you have another trigger, all you have to do is set the opacity to be one. And if it's zero, then it will feed that back in. And if it's already existing, the opacity is one of the element, then the fade out will take place. And the opacity, as it gets changed, we're gonna have the transition effect of the fading of the elements. So that's how you can add fading in all just using pure JavaScript.